Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome back to Lindores Abbey Rapid Challenge 2020 Grand Final. Yesterday I show you one of the games from first mini match and today we had the second mini match. And what are these mini matches? For those you don't know, uh, the players have to win uh, two mini matches to win the tournament. Okay, so they have four games where they compete, and if it's a draw, they have Armageddon game, uh, which have to be of course decisive. Uh, but yesterday Hikaru Nakamura won the first mini match, so today Daniel Dubov has no choice, and he has to win uh, the second mini match if he wants to continue the fight for winning the tournament. Uh, and already in the first game we had a very very interesting encounter so without further ado let's see what happened on the board uh, Hikaru Nakamura plays as white and he opened with e4 and Daniel Dubov plays c5 we have knight on f3 knight on c6 this is Sicilian defense and now not d4 the main line uh, of the Sicilian defense as uh, Daniel Dubov plays really great Sveshnikov variation uh, he is a second second of uh, Magnus Carlsen and Magnus Carlsen played that couple of times during the world champion match so definitely both of them uh, knows that very well so Hikaru goes for different line and he play c3 we have knight on f6 now attacking the pawn uh, on e4 and the pawn cannot be defended with the with the knight so we have e5 attacking the knight knight on d5 and now bishop on c4 attacking the knight which is unprotected so knight on b6 now attacking the bishop which is also unprotected bishop on b3 and now c4 kicking the bishop uh, we have bishop on c2 and as you see both players advance their pawns uh, to the enemy territory so this pawn on c4 actually controls a d3 and b3 which can be pretty annoying it's uh, you know preventing white from harmonious development but also uh, e5 pawns do the same here what usually black plays is queen on c7 or d6 with the attack on the pawn um, and usually white uh, just take it uh, but Daniel Dubov played d5 and saying okay if you don't want to take it I am fine with that but your pawn not gonna have easy life you know on e5 without the protection of, you, of your you know of your friends uh, and now d4 is not really possible because I'm gonna take it so uh, we have e takes on d6 which is the main line here queen on d6 and castle by white uh, bishop on g4 pinning the knight and it's very very annoying pin because the knight gonna jump to e5 so so it's it's pretty annoying so for example if you would like to play something like d4 you know make the developing move uh, of d4 why it's not possible it it was tried it was tried in the past but the games were usually lost by white uh, and d4 is not really great because after uh, taking the pawn a uh, bishop on d3 black can see simply castle and look at this this is a lot of pressure on the on the d5 uh, this is still on the board knight can still jump on e5 very unpleasant position for white uh, also b3 is not the greatest idea uh, because of this knight on e5 so this is definitely very very annoying pin so uh, what here usually players play as white is h3 kicking the bishop or rook on e1 uh, controlling e5 okay uh, with the double control of e5 the knight cannot be moved there uh, and also another idea is queen on e2 and this is what Hikaru Nakamura played and now again uh, this game was played a couple of times queen on f6 uh, looks like the most logical idea here uh, attacking the knight uh, twice trying to uh, double the pawns on on f file however after bishop on e4 knight on e4 uh, white gonna take the the pawn on b7 it was played already and it's uh, it's a very sharp line and daniel dubov still has the king in the center so he definitely want to avoid that line it would be very very risky 
easy for him uh, also e6 doesn't look really great because now uh, white has the time for playing you know something like b3 uh, this pawn would be under attack and now the rook uh, you know get the, the semi open a file to play uh, and it's really a good position for uh, for white to continue so instead Dubov plays uh, queenside castle and now d4 is still not possible because uh, if Hikaru Nakamura plays d4 we would have c takes on d3 uh, and losing the, the piece so uh, this would be just lost for Hikaru Nakamura so he cannot play that move so he play knight on a3 instead attacking uh, the pawn twice uh, and Daniel Dubov play queen on e6 defending again and also attacking the queen uh, and asking Hikaru maybe exchange the queens uh, Hikaru agrees so we have queen on e6 bishop on e6 and now b3 so finally Hikaru gonna remove the pawn on c4 and then maybe he has a chance to play d4 uh, we have bishop on d5 now making a space for the pawn preparing to develop this bishop uh, but also attacking this knight okay and doubling the pawn uh, on the f file would be very 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 bad for for white so we have one game in the database where knight on g5 was played with some pressure on f7 uh, however after h6 of course uh, f7 is for now defended and knight had to jump to to e4 then we had e5 and very very complicated game look at this position uh, white actually managed to win so this is one of the of the possibilities to play uh, but hikaru goes for this pawn but as it's so annoying so we have b takes on c4 knight takes on c4 and knight takes on c4 and now bishop takes on c4 with the attack of the rook rook on e1 and this position actually was rich uh, as well uh, and h6 was played okay h6 d4 so white were very happy with this d4 and the game continued ended in the draw so that's the, another possibility however daniel dubov want to be annoying again and he played bishop on d3 blocking <laughs> this d pawn again we have bishop takes on d3 rook takes on d3 and now finally hikaru goes rook on e3 uh, and now d4 is possible after rook on d7 however he didn't go for d4 d4 e6 very natural moves uh, and now this bishop has to be developed somehow and the game could be very very equal however uh, hikaru told okay i don't want to stay uh, with this bishop on c1 and developed it so poorly uh, so maybe i just exchange this bishop so we have bishop on a3 e5 bishop on f8 rook on f8 and now in this position of course d4 is still not possible at is it would just you know uh lose the pawn and black would have one extra pawn so not possible and also knight on e5 is not that great as the knight was defending d2 so uh yes this was possible however uh black would have better end game uh, uh, to play against these two uh, disconnected pawns so uh, much better position for, for black but probably white would hold and, and that would be a draw uh, so Hikaru goes for h4 the idea is to play h5 and then uh, create some weaknesses on this on this pawn then the knight can jump there uh, maybe on f5 later and then uh, put the pressure for example on g7 uh, we have f6 now at um, defending the, the e5 pawn uh, and now as the pawn is defended black can prepare uh, to play against the weakness on d2 okay the pawn stay behind Hikaru didn't move it uh, in time um, and he just you know has to stay behind so now he has to defend it uh, we have h5 as planned rook f on d8 and now king on f1 we have b6 and now Hikaru changed his mind he don't want to move the king to the center uh, he want to move the king to the safety so uh, we have g3 king on b7 king on g2 and now knight on e7 so remaneuvering the knight and now keeping an eye on f5 uh, which is pretty important because the knight cannot jump to, to, to f5 for now and, and you know put the pressure on g7 so that is the idea however now we have rook on e4 by Hikaru Nakamura 
preparing d4 so uh, the knight you know was defending d4 so something has to be done and daniel dubov jump immediately to d3 blocking this poor pawn uh, on d2 again and he tries to be as annoying as possible uh, we have a4 by hikaru nakamura and now knight on c6 so um, preventing any a5 move but also preparing the knight uh, to attack this pawn on d2 uh, we have rook on e2 so now preparing to defend that knight on a5 as planned rook on a2 uh, and now knight on c4 so for now black attacks the pawn three times uh, but also uh, the pawn is defended three times and of course is in favor of black uh, as black can just bring the king maybe uh, maybe this way then push e4 uh, remove the defender of the pawn and win that pawn so uh, being passive is never a good idea so Hikaru tried to counter attack on the king side we have g4 rook from the h rank to d5 uh, and now knight on h4 as planned that was the long plan uh, of Hikaru Nakamura to attack on g7 uh, but now black gonna win the pawn so we have rook on d2 and now knight on f5 as planned uh, rook on a2 rook on a2 so now the rook is just far from the action uh, and now g6 uh, so Daniel Dubov say I don't want to lose that pawn h takes on g6 h takes on g6 and now knight on e7 attacking the pawn and attacking the rook as well we have rook on d7 attacking the the knight and the problem is that knight cannot take on g6 uh, because actually after rook on g7 knight h4 uh, white would achieve nothing actually after king on h3 the king would be cut on the uh, on the king side the rook can you know control all 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 this uh, g file uh, and uh, black king you know can just enjoy picking up the pawns and win the game so uh, definitely not good idea so knight on g Eight instead attacking the pawn on f6 but now we have f5 g takes on f5 uh, g takes on f5 knight on h6 attacking the pawn and now simply rook on g7 uh, with check king on f3 and rook g5 defending the pawn and also another pawn is defended so uh, it's a pretty solid structure we have knight on f7 now attacking the the rook uh, and the pawn but as the pawn is protected then rook just moved to h five uh, we have king on g3 but as you see i show you already uh, this structure played by akiba rubinstein where the pawn um, and the rook can protect each other and the king cannot approach as all of these uh, squares are actually uh, protected the rook protects here uh, and the king cannot just come and in this position actually uh, cannot also come here so it's, it doesn't really matter as the rook uh, is also defending. Uh, but this is very interesting and it's also idea for you if you would like to learn how to, you know, how the pieces can be coordinated. So especially in this case, the pawn and the rook can be very, very e effective. We have rook on h7 by Hikaru Nakamura, knight on g5, now attacking the rook, and rook on d7. So rook did everything on the king side what was possible, and now going to win a couple of pawns. Uh, we have uh, rook on c2, it's possible, however it's not that great, as it's very very passive move, and after rook on d1, uh, this rook gonna be very annoying anyway. So, uh, for example, knight on f3, defending, but then just bring the king, king on c6, king on h4, king d5, king g5, king e4, so king is on time, uh, and now knight h4, maybe try to win the pawn, however, rook g1, it's very powerful, and after king f6, f4, f3, and now king can go to d3 uh, win that pawn and uh, and of course the game so this king is is still behind and uh, that's definitely not the way to play chess you know being passive is is always bad idea so hikaru plays a uh, king on h4 he tries to you know uh, get the king around and win this pawn somehow from behind uh, but it's very very slow so we have rook on d3 king on h5 rook on c3 and now hikaru wanted to go king on g5 
g6 however uh, he mouse sleep and he play king on h6 uh, and, and and his reaction was was hilarious he just you know uh, roll his eyes and like start to uh, laughing and at that uh, but the position is already lost so doesn't really matter and commentators in studio said that it's better to have the mouse sleep when your position is much worse when you, when you're losing that you're gonna be aware in the future uh, and it would be very very you know annoying if you if it happened in the very sharp position where you have to be very precise uh, and Hikaru doesn't have much of the mouse sleep but of course from time to time it happens uh, we have king on c6 so Daniel Dubov wins one the one move uh, we have king on g6 as planned and now f4 uh, knight on e4 now by Hikaru Nakamura attacking the rook so rook on e3 asking to exchange the the rooks and of course uh, that's in favor of uh, Daniel Dubov uh, so we have rook on c2 uh, and now rook a4 just winning uh, another pawn so now three pawns extra uh, and definitely one position we have king on f5 uh, bringing the king somewhere to the center maybe in front of the pawns but it's still far far away to do that uh, so here uh, Daniel Dubov play b5 defending the knight so the rook can go somewhere uh, we have rook on c1 the knight is of course pinned but the rook has a lot of freedom so rook on a3 rook on d1 now and b4 so pushing the pawn and now rook on d8 and here do not underestimate that move uh, because if you just simply you know say okay i'm gonna i'm gonna you know move my pawn and i'm gonna win the game uh, it's not really that that easy because that actually would just draw the game can you believe that because after rook on c8 what you gonna do with this with this king uh king cannot go to d5 as that's just an useful move uh, so probably king on b5 but now knight on c3 attacking the king and if king still want to keep an eye on on the knight as the knight is attacked as you see and play king on b4 this knight can you know just just check you forever and that would be just a draw and if you want to give up the knight which makes some sense but it's still not winning because after king on a5 rook on c4 b2 knight b1 can be played and after rook on a1 knight c3 uh this is just a draw this is just a draw so uh definitely cannot underestimate you know this this little rook behind uh so knight on b6 now defending um c8 however it's in the cost of the one pawn so we have king on e5 and now king can you know run to help you know defending however it's too late because we have b3 uh, rook on d6 with check king on b5 rook on d1 going to the front uh, king on b4 king on d4 a uh, rook on a5 threatening the very nasty skewer winning the rook so knight on c3 and actually in this position uh, Hikaru Nakamura after uh, making that move he resigned the game because yes he prevents uh, Rook of moving to d5 however Rook can also move to c5 and now uh, the knight is under attack and wherever the knight moves it's, it's just losing so uh, of course uh, after after moving here here is a checkmate so uh, that's the that's the first thing and if the if the knight is moved anywhere then uh, the Rook is gone okay so that is gone also the knight is gone so it doesn't work and also if rook on c1 this also doesn't work even it looks good however rook can just pick up the 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 knight and after taking just just promote the pawn and and win the game so this is why after knight on c3 hikaru nakamura just resigned the game and i would like to show you what happened in another round uh, so here we go we have three draws so at the end daniel dubov managed to win this mini match two and a half to one and a half and here are also the results so as you see hikaru nakamura won first first mini match daniel dubov won the second one uh, and today uh, we're gonna know who's gonna be the the winner of the tournament so stay tuned and if you want to see press subscribe smash the bell button and if you want to support the channel drop the comment that's very very important for me and uh, thanks for watching and see you in the next one